This video is sponsored by Squarespace. A 14 Year Long Dream is a 2022 Chinese indie documentary and is one of the most terrifying movies I've ever watched. The film tells the story of a woman named Jia An who went into a coma after a car accident in 2001 and wakes up 14 years later. In the 14 years when she was in a coma, China's economic reform was kicked into high gear. The country rapidly modernized, cities transformed. And for Jia An, that means she can't recognize any part of her life. Her parents have moved to a new apartment, her school was demolished and rebuilt, and her 25-year-old mind is now stuck in a 40-year-old body. It's a traumatic experience, so much so, Jia An is unable to cope with the mental stress and has to leave China entirely. Have you ever felt like you are trapped in a dream, unable to wake up? Every time I visit China, the place I was born and raised, I feel that way. The city of Guangzhou looks so different from what I remember, it feels unreal. It is detached from all the memories I have of it. This is why this film scares me on a personal level, on an existential level. Knowledge of it being a real event makes it one of the most terrifying movies I've ever watched. It's a fascinating story, a strange reflection on China's recent history from an unexpected yet relatable angle. So today, let me take a look at this hidden gem and let me show you why this movie is so scary. Now living in Canada, Jia An lives a peaceful life. While Jia An has gotten used to modern life, her life is largely detached from her past Chinese roots, a decision she has no choice in the matter. Yoshihotoze in 1978, China began experimentation with a market-oriented economy. The reform would be kicked into high gear in the 90s, opening up the country to foreign investments, private enterprises, and lifting price controls. The program would pay off greatly, especially in the 2000s, when China saw rapid urbanization and modernization at a speed that's hard to imagine for most people. This is China's high-speed rail network in 2008, and this is it in 2017. Today, a lot of Chinese people live a high-tech life. The country as a whole puts a lot of emphasis on science and technology, and it's definitely improving people's lives. However, this growth is not without its victims. While Jian's situation is certainly extreme, it's far from the only case. During the COVID pandemic, many Chinese hospital receptions are changed into self-service stations which only accepts payment through digital currencies. Many elders struggle to adapt. It's enough of a phenomenon to make it to national news. As China marches forward, it also becomes progressively more alienating towards old people. And this problem will only get worse with China's rapidly aging population. The thought of having to spend the next 40 years of your life living in a world that runs away from you must have been unimaginably stressful. 五十年前照片里的蒙特利尔和现在没什么区别。可是我小学照片里杭州和今天的杭州完全不一样。Still, Jia An wishes to go back. 其实,我还挺想回去看看的。想吃火锅。And it's with this request that Jia An and the film embark on a bizarre journey. If you search for this film online, you'll find almost nothing. It doesn't even have a website, 
a major misstep that can be easily remedied if they use Squarespace. Pick a template, upload images, link to your trailer, quick and easy. Even I can make a professional looking website in under 10 minutes. But if you want to go wild, you can also go super in-depth with all the options. Start your free trial at squarespace.com slash cinema and use the code AXANTHECINEMA to get 10% off your first purchase. Are you an artist, a musician, a shop owner? Don't forget to make a website that helps you stand out. Again, visit squarespace.com slash cinema and show yourself off to the world. And lives a peaceful life. 梦里，其实我能听到我爱人跟我说话。有时，他在我耳边跟我说：“你能听见吗？你已经昏迷十几年了。如果你在梦里能听到的话，请尽快醒来。” The film takes an unexpected narrative turn in the second act, as the film crew helps Jia An ease back into modern China. The journey begins slowly. Jia An would video call people in China and catches up on all the latest cultural changes and city development. But the true horror begins in Act Three, when she is presented with an opportunity to see her hometown through a VR headset. It sounds like a simple task, but I want you to guess how long she managed to stay there. That's it. Originally, the crew wanted to send her to China in a guided tour, but due to the COVID travel restrictions, that plan was scrapped. So they chose virtual reality instead, believing it would be safer both physically and mentally, as she had the option to call it quit at any time. Turns out, the VR experience is the exact trigger that reminds Jia An what she fears the most. The VR reminds her that. She's living in a body that does not feel like her own. A society that left her behind can be escaped. A body that left her behind cannot be avoided. How can she tell if she's awake or not? We can tell because we are outside observers. But from her perspective, she could very well be still trapped inside the matrix, unable to tell dream from. Are you familiar with the concept of the Boltzmann brain? This thought experiment suggests that reality, as we know it, can only happen before the heat death of the universe. Since the heat death of the universe lasts forever, it's infinitely more likely for a single brain to spontaneously form in the void, along with all of these false memories due to random fluctuations and quantum events. The brain would, of course, immediately manifest the truth. But the brain will not. It will just live its brave existence.